It's time for the interview. It's time for breakthrough. If you're ready for next level blessings, abundance, and prosperity, then it's time to tune in to the interview with your girl, Trish M. Hey, fabulous ladies. Hey, it's your girl, Trish M. And did you know that I own a boutique? Yes, ladies, yes. Check out Trish M. Boutique today and use code podcast to get 25% off the total order. Go to www.trishmfashions.com. That's Trish M. Fashions with an S. Dot com and don't forget use code podcast to get 25% off so first of all as we begin to talk about this on this morning transition to Canaan um, you have to first understand, I said that first you have to go there in your mind. The first thing you have to do is realize that when God makes a promise, he will fulfill it. And if God has not fulfilled the promise that he has made unto you, I always say, just remember, the story is to be continued. Mm -hmm. It's not over. So you first of all have to tell yourself that. So we're going to talk about a few ways um, to make it through this transition. A few things that you have to embrace during this transition. So first of all, I have up there, um, when God transitions you, the transition always comes with divine provision. Amen. When God takes you through a transition, the transition always comes with divine provision. So when he was taking the church of Israel out of the land of Egypt into Canaan, they went to murmuring about food. So what did God do? He provided them manna. In Exodus chapter 16, verse 4, we see that the children began to complain that they were hungry, and God brought down a divine provision out of heaven. It says, then the Lord said to Moses, look, I'm going to rain down fruit from heaven from you. Each day, people will go out and pick up as much as they need for that day. That's important right there because simply we get so tied up in what's going to happen tomorrow. Where's my provision coming from tomorrow? Where's my provision coming from next week? Where's my provision coming from next month? Where's my provision coming from next year? And so we get so caught up on what's happening futuristic that we can't embrace what happens on today. See, this is what he said. He said each day. Each day, people will go out and pick up as much food as they need for that day. Amen. So God is saying that whenever I transition you, I'm going to provide whatever you need for that day. And then when tomorrow comes, he will provide what you need for tomorrow. But he says for that day, you're going to have everything that you need. Amen. That's why he teaches us even in the model prayer, Matthew 6, 9, he teaches us he's the model prayer. He said, give us this day our daily bread. So God is going to give you enough bread for today. Mm -hmm. If you need more bread for tomorrow, he's going to give you more bread tomorrow. Amen. However much bread you need when God is taking you through a transition, mm -hmm. he's going to give it to you for that day. If you need more people tomorrow, guess what God is going to do? Mm -hmm. He's going to give you more people for tomorrow. If you need more resources for where you are next week, guess what he's going to do? He's going to give you enough resources for then. Amen. Whatever you need for the day that you are in, God is going to give it to you when you are going through transition. So don't fret. Amen. Don't fear. Don't doubt. Don't worry because God takes you through a transition. Divine provision is already waiting for you as well. Um, transition is all about an in-between place. Um, in that in-between place, things are happening and sometimes things are not happening. And so you got to make sure that, you know, when you're in transition as we are right now, MOC is in a season of transition. We see things happening, things not happening, 
things that are of God, things that are not of God. And it's like, what is really going on? But God gave me this point. And we look at Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 2 through 3. Come on. In Deuteronomy 8, 2 through 3, it says, Remember how the Lord your God led you through the wilderness for these 40 years, humbling you and testing you to prove your character and to find out whether or not you would obey his commands. So here is a point that I got out of that. It says, while they were wondering, God was leading. Wow. <laughs> Some of them was wondering away. Wow. Some of them was wondering, was focused. But God said, you know what? Don't even worry about it. Because while they wondering, I'm leading. I just need a select few to stay focused yeah. in the transition. You got to understand that in transition, everybody can handle the transition. And, and many will fall away. But God says, in the midst of the pandemic, they got lost. Not because God wasn't trying to lead them to greater. They got lost because they couldn't handle the heaviness that came with the leading. Mm. Who was leading? God was leading a certain way. And some can handle the way that God was leading. And so, so many did not make it from good to great. Everybody understand that? So in the season of wondering, in the season of testing, in the season of tribulation, you got to understand that, that while this is happening, God is still leading. God is still doing. Everybody may not understand what God is doing. I'll be the first to say sometimes I don't even understand what God is doing. But by faith, I keep it moving and I stay focused in the midst of it. And another thing that I got out of that was that while going from good to great, uh, it will require a testing of what's really in your heart. Come on, somebody. So, so while going from good to great, there is a testing of the heart. Because God, in the midst of, of coming out of Egypt, going into Canaan, God said, you know what? I'm going to test the heart. And there is going to be a separation, watch this, of good and great. Because listen, this is prophetic. This is so, so, so in sync with what God is saying. The next point was going from good to great where required testing was what's going on in your heart. God will always reveal truth, whether we like it or not. Everybody understand it? And yeah. when you're in transition, God will always reveal truth of what's really going on. He will show you that there are some that are really aren't going to be great. And you got to ask yourself, God, in transition, am I one that can handle great? Mm. Because if I can't handle great, because let me tell you something, when going from good to great in God, it's going to require more of you. And some people can't handle that. And they're like, God, I don't know if I can handle this because there is such a pull, there is such a tug, and there's such a requirement from you on my life, and I don't know if I can handle it. Mm. And so God, in this, he's not only telling you I'm leading you, but I'm also testing you. Mm. I'm leading you, but I'm also testing you. Will you follow my lead or will you follow yours? Wow. I'm leading you, but I'm testing you. Will you follow my lead or will you follow yours? This is where the rubber meets the road. This is where we start to see things and be like, oh my gosh, we see things about other people, but we also see things about ourselves. And we have to be real with ourselves. Can we handle the leading of God when God is unctioning us to closeness to him, to greater in him, to, to, to just a, another level in him? And, and one of the last things I got out of that scripture was, is that God wants to humble you in the process of leading you. Humbling you means that things will happen in the process that may be crushing, that may be hard, that may be challenging. But God said, if you would just humble yourself and seek me, he said, I'm going to make a way in the wilderness that's going to open doors for you, that's going to bring favor for you, and that's going to take you and your house, come on, y'all, to a whole nother level. So, so you got to understand that God was leading, God was testing, and God was humbling. God was leading, 
God was testing and God was humbling. And so many people think, you know, humbling is about being in a low place a lot of times. Really, it's saying it's not about me. It's about you, God. It's not about me. It's about you, God. Do what you want to do in me, through me, and for me. And if I got to humble myself to get it, I'm with it. Man. Oh, and, and this is what this last nigga, I got to say this. Either you'll humble yourself and submit, or you'll rebel and quit. Wow. God wants to humble you in the process of leading you. But he said, either you'll humble yourself and submit, or you rebel and quit. What does submit mean? Submit to whatever his will is. Yes. Submit to his way. Submit to his desires. Or you rebel and say, God, I ain't with that right now. I got to grind. I got to do what I got to do. I got to go get this money. I got to go get with this man or go get with this woman. You know, whatever it is. And you and God is saying, this is what I need you to do in this hour. Either you're going to humble yourself and submit or you're rebelling. You'll quit and you'll do what you want to do. Wow. That's good. Amen. So another thing when um, going through a transition, God will provide divine, divine provision. One, again, he, he uh, provided them food when they were hungry. Also, it's interesting to me, as you find in Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 5, it says that their shoes never wore out. It says this in Deuteronomy 29, chapter, uh, chapter 29, verse 5, it says, For 40 years, I led you through the wilderness, yet, yet, your clothes and sandals did not wear out. Mm. Imagine that. 40 years traveling through the wilderness when God was taking them through a transition. And the thing that was covering them, now watch this spiritually, the thing that was covering them clothes never wore out. The thing that was supporting them sandals never wore out. So from a spiritual aspect, God is saying, my covering for you will never run out. My support for you will never run out. For 40 years, it never ran out. Some of us, my kids wear shoes for like a week and they wore out. Yes. Like it's time for more shoes because they're so rough on. Yes. But God says for 40 years, when I'm transitioning you, time does not matter to me. When I'm transitioning you, time is irrelevant to me. The thing, like, like, so as long, God said, as long as it take for me to get you from good to great, for as long as it take, I'm, my covering for you, my support for you will never run out. Amen. Sometimes we get in a place where our efforts may run out, our, our willpower may run out. But God says, my love for you, my support for you, my cover for you, my, my resources for you, it will never run out. Never. When God is taking you through a transition, divine provision is waiting for you. We got you. Hallelujah. And one of the things that as you're transitioning, God always puts people in place to help with the transition. Mm -hmm. These are called your leaders. Yeah. This is where your Moses come in. This is where your Aaron's of the world are there. This, it talked about Moses was the leader that was leading them to great. They were good in Egypt. They even said it. Well, we was good, right? But God said, no, I'm going to send you leaders to transition you from your good to your great. I just need you to follow and so there was a time, watch this, there was a time what happened why some of them couldn't go from good to great because they couldn't follow their leaders. Wow. Here, here, look at Exodus 16 and 1. It says, in Exodus 16 and 1, it says the whole Israelite, Israelite community of Israel set out from Elam and journeyed into the wilderness of sin. Somebody say sin. Sin. So that's where it all happened. Amen. They journeyed into the wilderness of sin between Elam and Mount Sinai. They arrived there on the 15th day of the second month, one month after leaving the land of Egypt. Next. Did I have anything else? And in the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. Okay, I'm going to say that again. 
in the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you, you have brought us out here into the desert to starve this, this entire assembly to death. Here's a point that God gave me. He said, you can't grumble against the ones who haven't done anything but try to help you do a transition. Mm. He said, you cannot grumble against those ones that I have put in place to help you in transition. Transitioning from one level to the next level is God always positions people to help with transition. Y'all got to hear me. I'm going to say that again. God always positions man to help you. You know why? Because he's not going to come down and do it. But he's going to bless somebody man. to help you go from another level to the next. But then there were those that grumbled with the help. Now watch this. If we go to Numbers chapter 12, we look at Miriam. Miriam, do y'all know who Miriam was to Moses? Miriam was Moses' own sister. Watch what Miriam did. It says, while they were at Hazarah, Miriam and Aaron, what did they do? Criticize Moses. Because, and who's the leader again? Moses. Because he had married a Cushite woman. Now they're still, they're, they're trying to be great. They said, has the Lord spoken only through Moses? I'm anointed too. Hasn't he spoken through us too? But the Lord, what did the Lord do? He heard them. Now Moses was very humble, more humble than any other person on earth. So immediately the Lord called to Moses, Aaron and Miriam, and said, go out to the tabernacle, all three of you. I need all y'all at the, at the table. So the three of them went to the tabernacle. Then the Lord descended in the pillar of cloud and stood at the entrance of the tabernacle. Aaron and Miriam, he called, and they stepped forward. And the Lord said to them, now listen to what I say. If there were prophets among you, I, the Lord, reveal myself in the visions. I, would, I speak to them in dreams. But not with my servant Moses. I, of all my house, he's the one I trust. I speak to him face to face. Clearly, and not in riddles. He sees the Lord as he is. So why were you not afraid to criticize my servant Moses? Wow. My God today. Mm -hmm. The Lord was very angry with them, and he departed. As the cloud moved from above the tabernacle, there stood Miriam. Now what happened to Miriam? Her skin as white as snow from leprosy. When Aaron saw what had happened to her, he cried out to Moses, Oh, my master, please, that's his brother, right? Oh, my master, please don't punish us for this sin we have. So what? Foolishly committed. Don't let her be like a stillborn baby already decayed at birth. Wow. So God was saying, listen, don't play with the anointed people that I have put in position to lead you. He said, do not play with leadership. Amen. And, and, and this happened, and this happened with his own brothers and sisters. And they had to repent. God is saying, I'm taking you from good to great. Now, this is not just a respect of us as leaders, as pastors. This is, this is in respect of people that God has divinely put in your life mm. to help you wow. be a blessing to you, to help you uh, with your mind, to help you with your business, to help you with whatever. God will strategically put people in your life yes. to be a blessing and not a curse. But when you begin to put your mouth on them mm. and you begin to criticize them, Miriam, his own sister, put a curse on her own life. Wow. That's why the Bible tells us to pray for our leaders. Pray for our leaders. Amen. Yeah. Again, um, 
this is not just pastors, but that's leaders throughout the land. So, you know, especially in our political world, we, we, we have a lot of difference of opinion and some people like our president, some people don't like him. But the Bible declares we are to pray for them. Yeah. If nothing else, pray that they know Jesus. If yes. nothing else. Amen. 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 And um, so another thing, when God is taking you from good to great, don't settle for less than God's best for you. Amen. Don't settle for less than God's best for you. Amen. Keep your eyes on the prize. There will come times in transition when God is transitioning you when you want to quit. Sometimes you may even quit. But you can't settle for God's best that he has for you. So watch this in Exodus chapter 3, verse 17. He says, um, I have promised to rescue you from your oppression in Egypt. I will lead you to a land flowing with milk and honey. Watch this. The land where the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, Hivites and Jebusites now live. We know that all of those were some of the most, uh, all throughout scripture, was some of the Israelites' most, most feared, uh, most competitive enemies. But God tells them, where I'm taking you, your enemies are in that place. The oppressors are in that place. But here's what you have to understand. Where the enemies was were that's where God had the best for his people mm -hmm. so here's the deal some of us are worried about a little opposition but that's where your stuff is at mm -hmm. wow. some of us are worried about a little bit of opposition mm -hmm. a little a few challenges but that's where your stuff is at mm -hmm. that's where the promises are is in the opposition. Is 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 in that place. And the promise was God says, I'm gonna drive all of them out. But sometimes we get worried with opposition. We get worried with challenges. We get worried when things don't line up. We get worried when uh, we may walk up to the door and that door is not open. But God God says that's where your stuff is at. Your stuff is on the other side of the door. Your stuff is on the other side of the challenges. Your stuff is in the land where your enemies are. And God says, I've already given it unto you. Only thing you got to do is walk through the door. Only mm. thing you got to do is walk through the crowd. And so as God has promised you some things, sometimes it's not going to be in the land of comfort. Sometimes it's going to be in the land of the opposition. Wow. And if God has promised you that, that's, it belongs to you. You got to go get it. Because it's yours. Man. Wow, that's a great segue because God was showing me, if we go back and we look at Exodus 16 and 1, when I was uh, 16 and 1, uh, it was talking about the children of Israel. It said the whole community set out to Elam, all of that, after leaving the land of Egypt. But it says, in the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the Israelites said to them, here's the part that they said that ties into what Pastor D just said. If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. They set up there, we set around pots of meat and we ate all the food we wanted. So it's like, I hear what you're saying. You're saying it's on the other side of that. But the children of Israel only saw the comfortability that they had in Egypt. And, the, and when they were on the other side of it, they didn't like the process in between. They wanted to go back to the lifestyle that was easier and not the process that was challenging. And so you're saying God is on the other side of it. You're saying in the midst of your enemies talking about you, in the midst of the frustration, in the midst of all this stuff that you got going on, you're saying it's on the other side of that. Well, the children of Israel said, well, at least when we was over there, we could eat chicken and we could sit down and talk. They, they were on the other side of it but they wanted to go back. Wow. They were on the other side of it, wow. 
but they didn't want to endure that side. Mm -hmm. They wanted to keep the other side because the other side is easy. Well, at least on this side, I ain't got to go through what we've gone through. We I ain't got to go through miscarriage, so I just got to quit. I ain't got to go through no lack, so I'm just going to stay over here and let somebody take care of me. I'm going to do this. You know, on, at least on this side, I had a man. That's but right. in the process, I had to lose a man. Come on. Mm -hmm. So so it's like I would rather stay on this side where it, it's a mess, but at least I'm this. Y'all yeah. fill in the blank. Then go through the process on the other side, which is frustrating That's because I ain't got that yet. Let me, let, me, let me jump in here. And I was, as I was reading that, you know, the interesting thing about that is it says that uh, it, was on, it was in the second month on the 15th day. So you tell me you have been in oppression and slavery for 430 years. Mm -hmm. And God has promised you he was leading you to a promise of freedom. Mm -hmm. and you had only been in that process six weeks. Wow. In the, the other second month, in, the, in the second month on the 15th day, that's about mm -hmm. six weeks compared to 430 years. And you ready to quit. You ready to quit. Wow. And then God gave me this. He said, in transition. Transition means next level. Transition means you're going from good to great. He said, in transition, you can't desire or live the same old lifestyle when God is transitioning you to something greater. Wow. He said, you can't bring that same mindset. Your mind has to expand and grow so that it can receive the greatness that God has for you. The same mindset equals the same life. Wow. Yeah. The same chicken that you was eating in Egypt, you're going to keep eating that chicken when God has steak on the other side. But because on the other side of the chicken, you have to go out and slay the, the, the cow versus going to order it and they bringing it to your table. You have to go out and slay the cow, then cook the cow, season the cow, and do all of that. That was too much of a process for too many people. And so instead of slaying the cow, they just want it brought to their table because then at least they could just eat it like they want it then. But if I got to go through all of that, I don't want it, God. And God said, if you're going to bring the same mindset to this next level of greatness that I'm coming, in your mind you're going to think you're great, but you're still good. Because you're going to fool yourself to say, oh, I'm at another level. I'm at another level. But your mind is the same. And your habits, not only... Is your mind the same, but your habits are the same. Wow. You talking the same. And so it's like, God, I got to change my mindset. And then once I change my mind, my mind is going to speak to my heart. And my heart is going to change. And from the abundance of the heart, my husband going to hear me talking different. I ain't gonna be, I'm not going to keep singing the same old sob story. Well, one to me, we ain't God. We this, we that. Or we struggling. We did, because my mind has changed, my heart is changing, and now my mouth is changing. The words that I say are different. I'm talking a whole new language. I'm walking a, 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 a whole, to a whole new beat. I can't walk to the same beat that I was walking to 20 years ago. If you find yourself walking to the same beat you were walking last year, the year before, and you're singing the same old love story song that, that, that makes you down, something's not right. You got to change the way that you think. The thinking change your heart, yeah. and your heart changes your mouth. That's right. That's right. That's good. I love that. Same, yeah. same mindset yeah. equals the same life. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. All right. We got one or two more points. I got one more. Pastor Trish, I'll give you one more. We're going to get out of here. So the next thing I want to say is this. So again, uh, wherever God transitions you, he, has, he always provides divine provision. Don't settle for God's um, best for you. The last point I want to make is this. Um, be a voice of hope and not a voice of complaint and despair. Be a voice of hope, not a voice of despair. Be a voice of hope. It's going to take you hearing the right things in this transition. It's going to take you being around the right people who are speaking the same language mm -hmm. in this transition. That's why when um, they sent the 12 spies out and they seen the giants, they seen the land, they experienced the land, they experienced the goodness of the land. 
they experienced the grave. They experienced all those things that the Lord has promised to them. But they seen the enemies that God told them that he would drive out. And they came back with a voice of despair and not hope. It could have been that, yes, they seen the giants. But what if they came back and said, yes, uh, everything that God promised us, because they did start out with a voice of hope. They did start out saying, everything, the land is full of milk and honey. The land does have everything that God has promised us. And then they said, but, but there are giants in that land. Mm -hmm. What if they had to say, yeah, there's giants in that land like Caleb and Joshua. They said, but God has already given it unto us. And surely we can take it. Not because of who we are, because of what God said. Mm. Sometimes we're going to come up against situations that are speaking real loud. Mm. Sometimes we're going to go into circumstances that are barking real loud at us. Mm. But what you say back to the situation, mm. what you say, matter of fact, in the situation, yeah. will determine how that situation turns out. Ten of those spies came back with a bad report. And what they said while they were in the situation determined how the situation turned out for them. You guys know the story. They did not inherit the promised land. Two of them, Caleb and Joshua, came back. They were in the same situation, but they said something different. And because they said something different, because they were a voice of hope, the same situation turned out different different for them because they were saying something different in this season you cannot let your situation speak louder than what you believe mm, that's good. whatever you believe no matter what the situation looks like you got to begin to speak it you got to begin to say it sometimes it's not going to look like it sometimes it doesn't feel like it i got a voice to record on my couple of them on my phone. I get up, I, I, I just, sometimes I don't even feel like talking. I'll, I'll, every morning, I'll just hit play. And I'll listen to myself declare the promises of God every morning. Every morning. Over and over and over. Because you got to hear it. And once you begin to hear it, you can visualize it. And once you begin to visualize it, then you can hold it in your hand. But you got to hear the voice of hope. You cannot lose hope. Wow, that's good because one of the things that the children of Israel from going from good to great did was their, their voice that changed. They got frustrated in that process and the things that they began to say changed. And we look at Exodus, Exodus 32 and 1. Um, it, it says that when the people saw that Moses was so long, watch this. Things were taking too long to happen. When the people saw how long it was taking Moses to come back down the mountain, they gathered around Aaron, and now their voices were saying something else. They said, come on, make us some gods who can lead us. We don't know what happened to this fellow Moses who brought us here from the land of Egypt. Go down to verse 35. Now we know that they begin to make a golden calf and they begin to worship that God. And God saw it. God told him, he said, then the Lord sent a great what? Plague, Plague upon the people because they had worshiped the calf Aaron had made. Because their leader had went to spend some time with the Lord. And they were stuck. It seemed like they were stuck. You know how you're going from good to great and things get at a standstill. It's like it's like we're not growing. It's like we're stuck right here. Yeah. And so because they were stuck, they hadn't got what they were believing God for. They became stuck. And it's like, it don't seem like we're growing anywhere. You know how we say we're growing yeah. somewhere? They got stuck in the process. And it's like, we're not growing anywhere. Moses is up there talking to the Lord. Well, I ain't heard nothing. So what they say, you know what? I'm going to do something different. <clears throat> and when they that voice of despair came in, it cursed their life. Their own voices cursed their life because what happened? God, the Lord sent a great plague upon them. Wow. And so what God was saying to me to tell y'all, he said, tell them you can't serve an idol God more than you serve the true God. 
when you're in transition in a pandemic oh, wow. and when you're trying to go from good to great. That's right. mm -hmm. So what does that look like? We're in a pandemic. We've already talked about this. The CISA churches are getting, even mega churches, churches are getting smaller and smaller and smaller every day. Why? Because there's a great falling away. People are beginning to use their voice, their gifts, and their talents more so for worldly things than godly things. Why? Because in this process, in this pandemic, things are slow. Like, I mean, what are we doing? Online? What are we doing? Are we coming in the house? What are we doing? This business? What are we doing? Trying to start a family? What are we doing? Trying to do this ministry? Things are slow, right? And so the people began to get frustrated because it was slow and we couldn't go to church like we wanted to. We, this job, we had to make adjustments and, and everything had to adjust. And so what did they do? They began to take their time and attention that they normally would give to God wow. and give it to something else. Mm -hmm. That's all idolatry is, is giving what should be God, you give it to something or even somebody else. And God is saying, if we're going to go from good to great, yeah, the great falling away is happening. Yeah, people are talking more despair than they are hope. But who in the midst of you will rise up to the occasion and talk God all day long? We'll, we'll talk next level all day. We'll not give up on God. We'll trust the process. We'll not walk away and quit and rebel. Who in the midst of a global pandemic will still focus on going from good to great. Yeah, the great falling away is happening. Did you know that was in the Bible? God said in this day, right now that we're living in, that the great falling away would happen. And everybody's surprised. I'm not surprised. But our, what we, our job is, is to challenge you on an individual level. It's like Jesus did with the, with the disciples. He said to you, Will you follow away too? Wow. Will you follow away too? Will you leave too? Will you go astray too? He asked them. And the disciples said, God, where are we going to go? You got the word. You got our hope. You got our joy. Where are we going to go? Because everybody was falling away. So just think about that. In this hour, when we're going from good to great, don't get distracted by those that fall away. The world is falling away, but we can. Amen. We can, y'all. Amen. Amen. A team, I, I believe that God has really transitioned us in this season to Canaan. I do believe that. And in that process, a lot of times, again, like we've seen it, like it's nothing new that um, challenges are calm, oppositions are calm, but we must realize that our stuff, whatever God has promised you, is in the opposition. And you have to go through to get to. You have to go through to get to. The Bible declares that God says he will never leave you nor forsake you. So if God is with you, you cannot lose. It's already a fixed fight. And so my prayer is, again, is uh, we go from good to great that God that you keep your focus on God, keep your eyes on God because God is going to see us through any situation and every situation. Out of any situation and every situation. You just got to stay locked in. The reality is God never gives up on us, so we should never give up on him. Amen? Amen. 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 Amen.